Naririnig mo na ba ang salitang ADHD? Madalas ka bang nakakalimot sa klase o ng mga appointments mo? Madalas bang naghahanap ka ng mga gamit mo o di kaya naman ay nawawala ang mga ito? Kung nakaka-relate ka sa mga tanong ko, tara, pag-usapan natin yan sa video na ito. What is ADHD? Based on researches, when you say ADHD, it is a neurobiologically based developmental disability. In children and adults, with a persistent pattern of problems in the areas of inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. So what do we mean by neurobiologically based developmental disability? That means when you say neurobiologically based developmental disability, this, this disability has something to do with the brain. That's why we call it, call it neuro, that means brain. What about persistent pattern? When you say persistent pattern, wherever the individual is, then we can observe the inattention, the hyperactivity, and impulsivity. For, a for example, for a child, if the child is very impulsive, inattentive, or hyperactive at home, and yet when this child is already at school, the child is very behaved, the child is very normal, then we cannot call that as ADHD. So when you say persistent pattern, inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity is always present to the child wherever he is, wherever she is. Now, have you heard about DSM? or DSM-5. When we say DSM-5, it is a diagnostic and a statistical manual of mental disorders. This is the manual that the doctors use in diagnosing a certain disability. Based on this manual, it says that ADHD, same with the other researches that when you say ADHD, it is a persistent pattern of inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity that interferes with functioning or development. Okay, that affects the functioning or development of a certain individual. That is according to DSM-5. Again, when you say DSM-5, it is a diagnostic and a statistical manual of mental disorders that doctors use in diagnosing a certain case, in diagnosing a certain disability. Another question, how frequent is ADHD to male or female? Do you have any idea about it? Based on what is indicated in DSM-5, uh, ADHD is more frequent in males than in females in general population. But for the inattentive type of ADHD, DSM-5 says that females are more likely than males to present primarily with inattentive features. In this case, no, inattentive type of ADHD, there are more females than males. And according to the study of Betty and his colleagues in 2013, it indicates that almost 10% of children between the age of 4 to 17 are reported by their parents as being diagnosed with ADHD. That means in a class of 30, there is a possibility or there might be two or three children that have ADHD.
What about the types of ADHD? We have different types of ADHD. And the first type is the what we call as inattention type. This is the, the type in which there are more females than males. The question here is, what are the manifestations of inattention? If one of the question, symptoms, manifestations, is present to me or to a certain individual, do I have already an ADHD? What do you think is the answer to that? You don't have yet the ADHD. You must have at least five symptoms. But then, even though you have already at least five symptoms, does not a guarantee for you to say that you have the case unless there is already a formal assessment coming or came from experts, came from clinical psychologists, developmental pediatrician, or occupational therapist, etc. So without having such formal assessments, then you could not call yourself, you could not label yourself, you could not label others as having ADHD. Six of the following symptoms have persisted, persistent rather for at least six months to a degree. For, for those symptoms, if you can observe that for six months or more, then you might have an ADHD. But if you can just observe those symptoms you know, in a month, in a week, two months or three months, then it's not a guarantee that you can already label yourself as having the ADHD. So what are really the manifestations of inattentive type of ADHD? First is, often fails to give close attention to details or makes careless mistakes in schoolwork, at work, or during other activities. Example to that, they often overlook or misses, they often overlook or miss details. And the result is the work is inaccurate. Second manifestation, they often has difficulty sustaining attention in test or play activities. It's very easy for them to start, but it's very the challenge for them, the challenge to them is to finish the tasks. Why they could not finish the task? Because it's very hard for them to focus. It's very hard for them to sustain their attention. Next, often does not seem to listen when spoken to directly. So these are the individuals that when you are talking to them, it seems that they are not listening. Mind seems elsewhere, even in the absence of any obvious distraction. Fourth is, often does not follow through on instructions and fails to finish schoolwork, chores, or duties in the workplace. Example to that, they can start tasks but quickly loses, you no? Know, they can they can start the task but quickly lose focus and is easily sidetracked. So this is very challenging, right? For schoolwork assignments, they could not finish that. Sometimes for quizzes or exams, they yes they can start but there is a tendency that they could not finish it. Because it's, again, it's very hard for them to sustain their attention. Next, they often have difficulty organizing tasks and activities. One of the reasons for that, why do they have difficulty organizing tasks, it's because of their frontal lobe. One of the areas affected in their brain is their frontal lobe. And what is the function of the frontal lobe? One of the functions of frontal lobe is is to 
is to make us organize. But then how could you be able to be organized if your frontal lobe is really affected? Some examples in here are difficulty managing sequential tasks, difficulty keeping materials and belongings, messy, that's why most of the time their things are lost. Most of the time, they could not see their things because of being very disorganized. Another, they often avoid, dislike, or is reluctant to engage in tasks that require sustained mental effort. It's very hard for them to make reports. It's very hard for them to complete the forms or review lengthy no? lengthy papers because that's the reason they often lose things necessary for tasks or activities ito yung sinasabi natin na kabibigay mo lang ng pencil kabibili mo lang pag uwi wala na so the lesson here is if the child often loses loses things necessary for tasks or activities all things you know that the child have should have label should have names or even contact numbers para kahit mawala yung bagay na yon makikita kahit mawala yung bagay na yon may babalik sa kanya kasi given na yan sa kanila madalas nakakawala sila ng and they themselves could not understand why they are like that. That's why kailangan natin silang intindihan na ganun talaga yung pinagdadaanan na. Pinagdadaanan nila. Be being a mature individual, being with them, guiding them, kailangan pinapaliwanag natin sa kanila yun. At kailangan hindi nawawala yung ating guidance. Next, is often easily distracted by extraneous stimuli. What do we mean by extraneous stimuli? Pag sinabi mong extraneous stimuli, ito po yung mga nakakadistract ng mga bagay-bagay. For example, ang bata ay nakaupo sa gilid ng bintana or malapit sa bintana. Kapag may dumaan, yung dumaan na yun, that we call that as extraneous stimuli. So, since the child is very no, easily distracted, Saan natin siya pwedeng iupo? Sa likod ba? Sa gilid? Malapit sa bintana? Or sa harapan ni teacher? I think it would be proper, it would be good if the child will if the child will sit, no, in front near the teacher since the child is very easily distracted, it's not advisable for this child to be seated at the back or near the windows. Next, manifestation is, is often forgetful in daily activities. Examples to that, no? they forget returning calls, they forget paying bills, they forget appointments. Kaya kailangan, kailangan meron sila palaging reminders for them to be always be reminded now how many checks did you get in the checklist did you get five four or three remember that if you got five or more among the checklist that's not a guarantee for you to label yourself as having an ADHD for you to be labeled as having an ADHD, you need to have a formal assessment from doctors, from professionals, trained professionals like clinical psychologists, developmental pediatrician, etc. So when is ADHD starts the individual's life? It starts at the early, early years of life. But then the problem but problems usually starts at the age of 7 or before they reach 7. Why? Because this is the time that the child is already in school. 
This is the time that the child is being compared to normal individuals. This is the child is being compared to classmates. This is the child that the child is being observed that he cannot do he, 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 he or she cannot follow procedures. He or she cannot finish the tasks, etc. Can they outgrow the symptoms of ADHD? To some, yes. They really can outgrow ADHD. But about 60% continue to have symptoms into their adult life. That's all for this time. The next episode of ADHD will be uploaded soon. Goodbye!